Lyle and the Birthday Party by Bernard Weber. It was Joshua's birthday. The Prims were happily busy with party preparations. Lyle the crocodile who lived with them was busy too. As usual, Lyle was being helpful. Parties were fun. He wished he could have one. He'd have colorful streamers just like these and balloons as big as this and a cake exactly the size Mrs. Prim was decorating for Joshua, he told himself. The more Lyle thought about it, the more he too wanted a birthday party. Why shouldn't I have a birthday party? He asked himself. I was born, wasn't I? Suddenly, like storm clouds coming down upon a lovely day, Lyle was jealous, mean, green, jealous of Joshua's soon to be celebrated birthday party. Lyle didn't want to be jealous. It felt awful. Besides, he loved Joshua dearly. But the more he smiled and tried to cover up, the more jealous he seemed to become. Worse still, Lyle was sure everyone could read his unhappy thoughts. <clears throat> Lyle almost forgot about being jealous when the party guests arrived. He even told himself he was having a marvelous time. He played musical chairs, pinned the tail, and gave each of the winners a turn on his back. But when it came time for Joshua to blow out the candles, the mean, jealous feelings began to return. Lyle could just picture himself blowing. And it was more than he could bear to watch Joshua unwrap his gifts. Oh, how Lyle wished they were his to unwrap. By the time the party was over, Lyle was in a dark, dreadful mood. He hardly recognized himself. While Joshua thanked his guests for coming, Lyle just stood by sulking and scarcely even waved goodbye. Everyone was so surprised. This wasn't a bit like the Lyle they knew and loved. To make matters worse, that very night, Lyle stepped right through a toy drum, a favorite birthday gift of Joshua's. Everyone said it was an accident and Lyle shouldn't feel bad about it. But was it an accident? Lyle went to bed not feeling at all sure. The next day at breakfast, the Prims were still talking about the party. Whatever can be keeping Lyle? Mrs. Prim suddenly asked. His breakfast will be getting ice cold. Mrs. Prim called up to him, Lyle, Lyle, breakfast. A very sad Lyle, feeling a full measure of shame for his behavior the day before, made his way down the stairs. Something is wrong with Lyle, said Mrs. Prim. He seems all right to me, said Mr. Prim. He isn't smiling, said Mrs. Prim. Perhaps he doesn't feel like smiling, Mr. Prim replied. After all, he's only... Mr. Prim caught himself about to say human. Nevertheless, said Mrs. Prim, I do believe he's coming down with something. Now, let me think, she said. What has been going around? Chicken pox? Mumps? Measles? Oh dear, she exclaimed. There have been several cases of measles in the neighborhood. I doubt seriously that Lyle has measles or anything else for that matter, Mr. Prim broke in rather sharply. All the same, said Mrs. Prim. I'll just have a look at his throat. There, she said. Just as I suspected, it's pink and scratchy looking. It's always pink and scratchy looking, said Mr. Prim. 
Besides, it wouldn't surprise me if a good hearty breakfast cures whatever is ailing Lyle. Everyone returned to the table, but Lyle only picked at his food and didn't seem at all hungry. There, you see, said Mrs. Prim. He didn't touch a speck of food, not one speck. Mr. Prim was off to work and Joshua to school. Now, now, said Mr. Prim. Lyle is going to be all right. I'm quite sure of it. But Lyle wasn't all right. He moped around the entire morning. He didn't seem to want to go out. He didn't seem to want to do his chores. He really didn't seem to want to do anything. Mrs. Prim wondered if she should call a doctor, but whom to call? Certainly not her family doctor. What would he know about crocodiles? What about the zoo? Now that was being sensible, she told herself. Surely someone there would know how to advise her. Please, said Mrs. Prim when she was connected with the zoo. My crocodile isn't feeling well today. Could you kindly recommend a good crocodile doctor? Where is this crocodile? A man asked. He's right beside me here in the living room, said Mrs. Prim. Living room? Yes, said Mrs. Prim. You did say living room, the man made sure. Yes, living, L-I-V-I-N-G, room, please, continued Mrs. Prim. He must have a doctor. Well, the man hesitated. Yes, do go on, pressed Mrs. Prim. Well, there is a Dr. Lewis James on East 65th Street who is very good with crocodiles. Dr. Lewis James, oh, thank you. Thank you very much, said Mrs. Prim gratefully. The instant Mrs. Prim put down the receiver, she realized she had forgotten to ask for the doctor's telephone number. She wondered if she should call the zoo again and decided she wouldn't. No problem, really, she cheered herself on. His name is Dr. Lewis James and Mrs. Prim stopped. Had she caught the name correctly? Was it Dr. Lewis James or was it, could it possibly have been Dr. James Lewis? Whatever is wrong with me this morning? She asked herself, Lewis James, James Lewis, Lewis James, James Lewis. She recited over and over trying to fit the two names like stubborn pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Dr. James Lewis rather does sound more like it. She finally persuaded herself. Hello, operator, Mrs. Prim was on the telephone again. Would you please tell me if there is a Dr. James Lewis located on East 65th Street? Yes, there is, answered the operator after a moment. Would you like to be connected with him? Oh, thank you, yes, please, Mrs. Prim said. There, I was right. She sighed with great relief, but Mrs. Prim wasn't right. In fact, she couldn't have been more sadly wrong. The Dr. James Lewis she was about to speak with, although an excellent doctor for children, knew precious little about the condition of crocodiles. Doctor, said Mrs. Prim when she was connected, my crocodile isn't feeling well today. Dr. Lewis was sure he had heard the word crocodile. In fact, he was quite sure, but then the good doctor was accustomed to excited callers. Who did you say wasn't feeling well? He asked with his usual comforting bedside voice. Lyle, said Mrs. Prim. Lyle, I see, said the doctor. Now tell me, how old is Lyle? Well, he really can't be sure, said Mrs. Prim. You see, we found him here when we moved in. You found him? How extraordinary, exclaimed the doctor. Dr. Lewis took a necessary few seconds to collect himself before going on to his next question. Does he have a temperature? He asked. I don't know, said Mrs. Prim. Well, does he appear flushed? I well, can't be sure of that either, she answered. He's so green, you know. His face is green, asked the doctor. Well, he's green all over, said Mrs. Prim. Madam, the doctor gasped, this sounds like an emergency. Wrap him warmly and put him in bed. I'll have an ambulance come fetch him at once. Mrs. Prim got Lyle to bed as the doctor ordered. 
Shortly after, the ambulance was at her door. The ambulance attendants looked in astonishment at the great green figure stretched out on the bed. And next they looked at each other. What do you think? Whispered one. I don't know. What do you think? Whispered the other. Is your name Mrs. Prim? They asked. Yes. Is the patient's name Lyle? Yes. Is this East 88th Street? Of course, Mrs. Prim replied with growing impatience. What's wrong with him? They wanted to know. I just don't know, said Mrs. Prim in tears now. There, there, said the attendants. Now, don't you worry, lady. He's going to be all right. Maybe it's one of those rare illnesses, whispered one attendant as they lowered Lyle down the stairs. Crocodilitis, for instance. If that's what it is, this one sure has a bad case of it, whispered the other. Do be careful of his tail, please. Mrs. Prim called down from the top of the stairs. We will, lady, they answered. I must not be feeling too well myself today, thought the lady in the hospital office when Lyle and Mrs. Prim were brought to her. She tried not to stare at the new patient. It's not polite to stare, she reminded herself and quickly got busy with questions. Patient's name, please, said the lady. Lyle, answered Mrs. Prim, looking around. Something was wrong. This hardly seemed a proper hospital for crocodiles. Lyle what? The lady wanted to know. Mrs. Prim grew even more suspicious. Just Lyle, she said. He doesn't have a last name? Last name, Mrs. Prim repeated. Now she was sure a dreadful mistake had been made. Well, how are you related? Asked the lady. Please, said Mrs. Prim, when she had found her voice. I'm sure Lyle wasn't meant to come here. I'll take him home at once. Take him home, said the lady. You can't take him home, not without his doctor's permission. Rules are rules, you know. So it was that Lyle became a patient. He was dressed in a hospital gown and put to bed. Good morning, said his nurse the following day. Time to freshen up. It was still dark outside. Lyle hated to wake up. Come along, lazy bones, said the nurse. My, what large teeth you have, the nurse remarked. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, mustn't bite the thermometer. After breakfast, Lyle was too restless to go back to sleep. Besides, he was curious about this big, strange place that was the hospital. Although they were surprised to see him, the other patients took to Lyle immediately. Please, said one, would you raise my head so that I may read? Lyle was glad to be of service. Please, said another, would you lower my shade? Lyle spent the rest of the morning pouring glasses of water, changing television programs, and giving aid wherever it was wanted. When he discovered where they were, he particularly enjoyed amusing the children. More, more, they called as Lyle danced, leaped, did handstands, headstands, and somersaulted about. To his, theirs, and everyone's great surprise, Lyle's last and best somersault landed him kerplunk directly at the feet of Mrs. Prim, Dr. Lewis, and the nurse the three of whom had been frantically searching for him. The nurse scolded Lyle for being out of bed. Lyle, she said, you were supposed to be sick, remember? Lyle smiled. He wasn't feeling a bit sick. Doing for others had made him feel good again. So good, in fact, he completely forgot about being jealous. So this is the famous Lyle I have been hearing so much about, said the doctor. I would say his health seems most improved. Don't you agree, Mrs. Prim? Mrs. Prim agreed. 
In fact, the doctor went on, I would say Lyle appears well enough to go home today. Doctor, I am so sorry for the trouble. Mrs. Prim began to apologize. Don't be sorry, the doctor interrupted. It seems to me Lyle is the best medicine our patients have had in a good long time. Lyle made many friends during his short stay at the hospital. Goodbye, they called out. Come back again. But only for a visit, mind you, Dr. Lewis added with a somewhat nervous chuckle. Several days later, returning from a shopping trip, Mrs. Prim had something important to tell Lyle. Lyle, she said, did you know there was something very special about today? Lyle didn't know. Well, said Mrs. Prim, today marks an anniversary, exactly three years since we found you. And surprise, there was going to be a party to celebrate, Lyle's party.